So when I heated up my piece of aluminium, these are my results. So we had a mass in kilograms of 1.005. The values for the voltage or potential difference and the current, they fluctuated very slightly, but I basically took these values. Now I could have chosen maybe um, 9.59 or 3.39, but I decided to go for these because it seemed to be these values for the longest amount of time. And to work out the power, we're going to use the equation that says the power is equal to the potential difference multiplied by the current. So in this case here, the electrical power is going to be equal to 9.58 multiplied by 3.38, which equals 32.38. So I'm just going to write down my value for the power as 32.4, and that's measured in watts. Now to look at the total energy transferred, the energy transferred is equal to the power multiplied by the time. And here we've got time in seconds. So we've got 0, 60 seconds or 1 minute, 2 minutes, 3 minutes and so on. So to get the values for the energy transferred in this column here, I'm going to put, multiply this number here, 32.4, by the number of seconds. So after 0 time, we had 0 energy transferred. After 60 seconds, we're going to have 32.4 multiplied by 60, which equals 1944. So I'm just going to leave it like that. So now we have some data here for the energy transferred in joules. Um, I must say I've kept it with no decimal places. I've maybe gone to more significant figures than I can really justify. Uh, but when I come to actually plot this on the graph, I suppose this one here, for example, 11,664, I could probably plot to the nearest 100 joules. So this is the data for the energy transferred in joules. We're going to put that on the x-axis, and we're going to have the temperature on the y-axis. So on my axis, I've got the energy going from 0 up to 20,000 joules, and I've got my temperature going up from 20 degrees, where we started at, up to the final temperature of 35 degrees over here. So I can now start plotting my data. So I've now plotted the data, and if I put my ruler next to it, we can see there's definitely this trend where we can fit a straight line. But the thing is, this straight line doesn't go through this point over here. And there's actually a bit of a curved start to this graph. And the reason for that is it takes a small amount of time from when we actually plug the heater in and start it heating up the metal block for that to cause the temperature in the thermometer to start rising. There's a bit of a time delay at the beginning. So what I'm going to do on this is I'm just going to fit my line of best fit to this data over here, and I think that's appropriate. And if we were to follow this data back, we'd have a bit of a curve at the start. Now the important part here is the straight line. So what I'm going to do is work out the gradient of the straight part of this graph. I'm going to do that by drawing in a triangle onto this line of best fit, and I'm going to go from this point here to that point over there. Now, in order to work out the gradient, I'm just going to put my values in. So this one here is at 19,000 for the x-coordinate, and the y-coordinate is 35. Whereas this point on the line over here, the x component is 4,000 in terms of the energy, and then we've got a temperature of 22. Okay, so in order to work out the gradient, the gradient is equal to the change in y value divided by the change in x value. Now the change in y value goes from 35 take away 22, and we're going to divide that by the change in x value, which was 19,000 take away 4,000 which equals 13 divided by 15,000, which equals 0 0.0008667. Okay, so this is a value for my gradient. Now we can use this value here for the gradient to actually work out the specific heat capacity of this aluminium. So the change in energy transferred is equal to mc delta theta. And we can rearrange this to say that the specific heat capacity is equal to the change in energy divided by m delta theta. Okay. Now this is related to the gradient because the gradient of that line 
was equal to the change in y value, which was our change in temperature, divided by the change in energy, delta E. Okay, and here we've got delta E over delta theta, but here we've got delta theta over delta E. And if we actually do some rearranging, we can then say that this specific heat capacity is equal, equal to 1 divided by mass times the gradient of that line. Now, if we put some numbers in, this is equal to 1 divided by the mass, which was 1.005 kilograms um, that we took when we actually put it on the mass balance. The gradient is this value here, 0 0.0008667. And so I've got my value still saved in the calculator. I'm going to multiply it by 1.005. And then I'm going to do 1 divided by this answer. And this gives me a value on the calculator of 1148.1. Okay. Now really, because we could only measure the temperature to the nearest degree, um, and that's something which is it's a bit tricky with the thermometers, you know, is it 31, 32? And it's really your judgment about the value that you take. We should only really give our final answer to two significant figures as well, like our raw data. So here we can say that the specific heat capacity of aluminium is about 1100. And the units, because we're looking at joules per kilogram per degree, are joules slash kilogram per degree Celsius. So this was my final answer for the specific heat capacity of aluminium, which is actually bigger than the value that we tend uh, to normally find. Normally the value for aluminium is about 900 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. So we actually had a higher value. So this aluminium block wasn't insulated. And that's the reason why we actually had a higher value than the kind of true value that we should have been approaching. So basically, as we were supplying energy to this, we weren't just heating up the block of metal, we were also heating up the room that it was in as well. So we could actually get a lower value and a, a more accurate value if we were to insulate the block, if we were to do this practical again. So maybe have a piece of polystyrene underneath it to reduce heat loss from the bottom, maybe some bubble wrap or some other kind of insulated material wrapped around the sides and on top of it, and that would actually give us a better value for the specific heat capacity of this metal. But there we go. I thought that this experiment here, um, there's quite a lot of analysis that you have to do. You've got to not only plot your data, you've actually got to put a, line, a straight line of best fit that doesn't necessarily um, go to the origin of this graph over here. You've then got to work out your gradient. You've got to use your value for the gradient into this equation over here, and that, this will get you a value uh, for the specific heat capacity. But there's quite a lot of advanced maths that you've actually got to understand to do this practical. So that one there was how we work out the specific heat capacity of a solid object like this metal. Thank you.